Hi, I'm Pastor Tim, and this is Quarantine. So I was thinking a little bit about the scriptures for this weekend and reading them, and uh, it made me think about something that happened to me when I was a freshman at Carthage. I was coming from the UP, and we had a lot of churches in the UP that would combine youth ministry for camps and things. And so I had a number of friends from all over, uh, Lutheran kids from different youth groups. And when I came to Carthage, we had um, sort of a weekend of orientation. And it was getting to know people, getting to meet people. We were the only people on campus. And I remember standing in line at the cafeteria and looking up and seeing one of my friends from the UP. And I remember talking with her that she was thinking of coming to Carthage. And so I cut in line in front of everybody, which made everybody sort of turn and watch what I was doing. And I walked up behind her. She had really long blonde hair and I grabbed her hair in a, in a fist like this. And I said, guess who? And she turned around and it, it wasn't her. Um, and of course I acted like that's just kind of how I roll. I meet people, um, that's who I am. It's that kind of a surprise that happens in our gospel text for today. Um, people come to uh, this scene of judgment and they're completely surprised. Everybody is surprised. And uh, well, just let me read it for you. It comes from Matthew. When he finally arrives, blazing in beauty and all his angels with him, the Son of Man will take his place on his glorious throne. Then all the nations will be arranged before him, and he will sort out the people, much as a shepherd sorts out sheep and goats putting the sheep to his right and the goats to his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Enter, you who are blessed by my father. Take what is coming to you in this kingdom. It has been ready for you since the world's foundation. And here's why. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. Then those sheep are going to say, what? Or master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we ever see you in prison or sick and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. Then he will turn to the goats, the ones to his left, and say, Get out, worthless goats. You are good for nothing but the fires of hell. And why? Because I was hungry and you gave me no meal. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was homeless and you gave me no bed. I was shivering and you gave me no clothes. Sick and in prison and you never visited me. Then those goats are going to say, Master, what, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or homeless or shivering or sick or in prison and didn't help? He will answer them, I'm telling you the solemn truth. Whenever you failed to do one of these things to someone who was being overlooked or ignored, that was me. You failed to do it to me. Then those goats will be herded to their eternal doom, but the sheep to their eternal reward. That was a reading from Matthew's Gospel, and the version was the message which is a contemporary version of that, that I really like. So this particular parable is about being surprised. 
Uh, earlier, I told you about one of the less than great surprises for both uh, this strange girl and myself. Uh, I imagine the people standing around Jesus, uh, he often attracted crowds that were very diverse. You would have uh, wealthy landowners, uh, part of the aristocracy, people who uh, worked in, in very important official positions in government, in, uh, in religion, in the temple. And, and then the masses of people would be uh, people from the artisan class. They would be um, uh, bakers and um, carpenters like his father. They would be um, people who worked in vineyards as laborers, uh, fishermen. And so Jesus was uh, talking to this wide range of, of people. I imagine as he began this story, uh, talking about what God's kingdom is going to be like, uh, when he started to say that he was separating the sheep from the goats, I kind of imagine one of the groups of people sitting there crossing their arms going, yep, now they're, they're gonna get theirs, you just wait. Uh, those people, you know, we all know who they are, right? They're going to get their, their comeuppance. Um, we, however, we are the, the true followers. We are the ones who, who get it. Um, and what's interesting to me is uh, everybody is surprised. The people who are let into the kingdom, uh, the sheep, uh, they're completely surprised. When did we ever, when did we do this? Uh, boy, do we belong here? It's hard, hard to believe. Our whole lives we've been looked down on and now uh, we find this out, we're, we're accepted. And likewise, uh, those who were certain beyond all shadow of doubt that they were God's chosen people. They were the ones who were getting in. They were the ones who had done the work, who had, had put in the time, paid their dues, whatever you want to say about it. Um, and so Jesus tells this story. And uh, earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Jesus says that, that this present generation won't pass away until I come again, until the kingdom comes. And so even though... For much of Christianity, there are people uh, waiting, 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 maybe crossing their arms and, and doing whatever they feel like they have to do to get in, uh, being diligent. Maybe uh, their, their being a Christian for them is, is a lot of obligation, um, and they're just waiting for the reward someday. Uh, I think this story is for them. Uh, Martin Luther once said to uh, polka is to know its benefits. Now, I loved polka, especially at a wedding reception. Um, you might have an adult beverage or two and you get out on the dance floor and you lose all your inhibitions and you fly around and it's a fun, fun, you're totally swept up in it. Uh, to me, that's a little bit like the kingdom of God. Uh, it's not something that's going to happen someday. You don't, you don't think about polka and are satisfied. You don't, you don't imagine doing the polka. Uh, doing the polka is not something you read about and go, wow, that's great. Uh, to know the benefits of polka, you have to do it. I think it's the same with the kingdom of God. Um, the people Jesus described, they weren't going out looking for, uh, you know, the, the marginalized people that they could help. It was just who they are. They just did it naturally. They didn't even realize they were doing it. That's the great thing. Um, to be a part of this kingdom of God, we don't always realize uh, the good that we're doing. We just put ourselves um, in the way and, and act naturally as God has called us to, uh, to be disciples and to follow the witness of Jesus. 
I think as we uh, think about our time and our life in COVID, uh, we may not be able to go out and uh, do a lot of things, but there's a lot of people we could contact who might be alone, who uh, might really need someone to talk to, uh, maybe to reach out. Uh, and it's not about doing some good deed, right? I mean, find somebody that you miss, somebody that you haven't spoken to in a while, right? Do it for yourself. I mean, to know, to polka is to know its benefits. To participate in the kingdom of God is to know its benefits. And the rewards are not for some foreign, distant land or place or other world. The benefits are for now. And the reason that everyone is surprised is that people, many people are still waiting. Waiting for some day when the kingdom of God is going to be here. But I believe the kingdom of God is here now. And it moves in us and through us.